Okay, let's go and, uh, and extract it real quick. Multi-Wii version 1.6. Uh, Blow it up and uh, what you get are two directories, two folders. A multi-Wii uh, uh, underscore 1 underscore 6 and a multi-Wii config underscore 1 underscore 6. Uh, this is the 1.6 uh, sketch that we loaded into the uh, Arduino IDE and that's what we we flashed up to the uh, the Pro Mini. The multi-week configurator now remember the Pro Mini is still uh, is still plugged in and uh, and flashing madly away because I don't have a uh, I don't have any sensors or uh, uh, I don't have a Wii Motion Plus plugged into it, or or what have you. It's just a raw board at this at this point. We'll go and open up the configurator. I happen to be running Windows, and here's your multi Wii configurator. We'll open that up, and if you've been looking through the forum at all, here's uh, here's the magic configurator. Um, I happen to be con uh, connected to uh, COM port 6. We'll open that up. We'll say start. And obviously it's going nuts over here because uh, it doesn't have any uh, any uh, Wii Motion Plus uh, connected to it. No nunchuck or whatever. Let me do a read. And uh, you know there's, there's really nothing uh, nothing going on there. But we're talking to it and uh, it's very low <laughs> very low cycle time because it's basically not doing anything but we have the configurator up and running and what I'm going to do now is just uh, uh, plug in a uh, a working uh, stabilization system the basic uh, <clears throat> the basic stabilization system that we uh, we hand wired and uh, uh, let's see what it uh, it should really look like Okay, just like we did before, we're going to go into the Arduino uh, folder. We're going to go into MultiWii config 1.6. We're going to not click on the MultiWii config 1.6 PDE file, the sketch, but we're going into application windows and of course if you have a, a Linux or a, a Mac you go into the appropriate folder but since I run Windows we're going to go in here and here's what you want to run and normally I just drag this uh, right click and drag it up onto my desktop and and put a shortcut to it that way I don't have to go through the multiple layers of, uh, of folders but again that's just housekeeping however it's comfortable for you we'll open this little guy up and here's the uh, the configurator window that you've no doubt seen if you've been into into the form at all. And uh, first thing, select the COM port that you have your your uh, FTDI cable or uh, or adapter uh, plugged into. Once you select it, and you've got a uh, a working COM port. You'll see your start and stop turn green. Hit start. Right off the bat you should start to see a, uh, a cycle time if everything is connected correctly or whatever. I mean we're we see a line here. I'm going to move the board and uh, left and right. Uh, pitch. Yaw. See the the magenta yaw. You see the yellowish roll you see the the other color showing pitch and we're in uh, in pretty good shape you notice that uh, the accelerometer the nunchuck uh, needs to be calibrated um, let me go and do a read that's the first thing you you need to do and this pulls in what's been stored in the EEPROM uh, on your Arduino and you see uh, the settings that I currently have in there 
uh, pitch 5.2, uh, yaw 9. I believe when this, uh, uh, you first bring your your software up and load it, I believe these, these should be 4.0, 4.0, and 8.0. I believe the uh, the O O30 is uh, is correct, and I think this might be minus 13 rather than minus 15, but uh, regardless, this is going to come in. When you first start flying this, or your, for your for your maiden flight, your RC rate, I would suggest bringing it down to maybe uh, 40 or 50. And the way you change these is um, hold and uh, uh, click and hold your left button, and as you see, you slide it back and forth. It acts as a slider and you can obviously see it, it changing over here as well. So RC Expo. Um, 65 is, is kind of nice. I've been, I've been leaving it there because uh, I haven't gotten into any real uh, aerobatic or whatever. I mainly use uh, my multi-rotors for, uh, uh, for camera work. So I'm, I tend to keep mine very uh, as stable as possible. Uh, but uh, obviously, if you uh, if you're starting to run out of out of throw or uh, not enough uh, control for you, you can put your RC rate up to uh, uh, I think it'll go up to 2.0. Um, but obviously, you see the red uh, go at the end of the curve uh, once you get beyond uh, 1.0. Uh, so I keep my Expo around uh, around 65, and uh, or the RC rate I mean around. Uh, uh, around 50, uh, 55, 60, 65 in that range. And whenever you change these, what you want to do is do a, a right. And what I do is uh, I stop, I start it back up, and I do a read. And you see, you know, it, it might change just a, uh, just a little, but that way you know it, it, really, uh, it really took, if you will. So now, here we go. And I'm uh, I'm rolling everything uh, around, just uh, doing it. And we want to go and do a uh, a calibrate on the accelerometer. So uh, what I'm going to go and do is pull all the way back on my uh, my pitch and go. Uh, I'm low throttle, and I went to the left. And you'll start to see uh, the green light uh, blink on your board. Um, when it stops blinking, then the calibration is done. While it's blinking, uh, you really don't want to touch it. Uh, just let it let it stay flat, level, undisturbed, and uh, you'll notice that uh, um, the uh, uh, accelerometer. Okay, it's done. My green light just went out, and now uh, my accelerometer uh, uh, z-axis is around around 200. Uh, pitch and roll is uh, you know zero one, but now it's now you see me moving things. Now everybody's changing, and you've got a calibrated system at this uh, at this point in time. You should be uh, you should be pretty much pretty much ready to go. So you can see this uh, this calibration screen is uh, is really key in not only checking out your system to make sure that you know everything is. Uh, is performing as it as it should, but uh, you know to uh, to fine tune and configure it uh, configure it for your your airframe. This is how you go and and really adjust it so it uh, uh, it performs you know to your liking. You may be a little bit more aggressive flyer. You want something as stable as possible. If you're getting a little twitchy in one of the uh, the axes or whatever, you know, uh, reduce p uh, uh, a bit. But there's a whole section on how to tune the PID settings. And when you're talking about PID settings, here it is. There's your P, your ID for roll, pitch, and yaw. Now, if you notice, I'm going to go now and just turn, uh, push my yaw to the right at minimum throttle. And notice, this is where you see your, your motor's arm. And at this point in time, if this min throttle remember min throttle in the uh, in the sketch that I said needed to be edited here's where it shows up so if I change my min throttle to say 1350 when I turned my my motors on 
by issuing a right yaw, this would say 1350 or 1285 or whatever you need to go and put in there to make sure that at minimum throttle, when you have your throttle all the way back, uh, none of your motors stop. And that's what you want. Um, <clears throat> and that's the most critical uh, critical setting that uh, that you can have. Once you find that magic setting, uh, I edit it in and leave it in the uh, um, in the sketch and uh, write it down someplace so you don't you don't lose it. But what you want to do is at at any uh, at any battery setting, uh, you want the min throttle to not shut off your motors. That's what the full left yaw full low throttle does. Notice the min setting is 1000. At 1000 the assumption is that uh, all your motors are stopped. So that's that's your safety setting. So again I'll turn it to the right and there it is. Now I'm going to give it about half throttle and that should, should be about a hover. Uh, notice the servo. My yaw. This is my yaw channel from the radio and here's the signal it's sending out to the servo. I'm giving left and right roll and you see what's what's happening. Your left and right right motor is moving. I'm going to give forward pitch. Back motor comes up. Two front motors go down. Back pitch. Rear motor goes down. Two front motors come up. And you can see here's the commands coming right from my radio over here to the right. So this is an excellent excellent tool you couldn't ask for anything else and here's just just moving my my uh, my roll and pitch axis back and forth now I'm not doing anything to the transmitter I'm just gonna go and muck about with uh, with the board and here I am just just tilting the board back and forth here I am just yawing it and you can see the board is is controlling uh, the motors and the uh, the yaw servo, uh, and this is this is what you want. I mean, this is your stabilization system, and I'm not touching the transmitter at all. So, if I was yanking about on the uh, on the completed tricopter, you would be hearing the the motors uh, uh, increase and decrease in uh, in uh, thrust, and you'd be uh, be uh, seeing the yaw servo go back and forth. So without ever flying it, uh, you could have it spinning up and just uh, muck about with it like I'm doing with the bare board here. And uh, you've got an operating uh, operating system. And this is all you need. All the rest is hard work from, uh, from here and fun. It's flying it, uh, seeing what it does, and, uh, and fine-tuning it to, uh, to your style and, uh, and your capabilities. So again, there's multiple, multiple uh, threads and posts out there on uh, on how to do this but this is just our quick and dirty uh, uh, version of it so enjoy and uh, you've got a, a quick uh, simple and cheap stabilization system